Hi guys, okay. John here. And what the hell yep. is happening on my screen? <laughs> so this is uh, near Halloween, and um, his wife wanted to be Jared Leto Joker. So he was uh, Marco Robbie Harley Quinn. He looks like a lame attempt at a drag queen. <laughs> And this oh my is my Lord. quick review of the new DC Warner Bros. At least he got the <laughs> boot. Got the boot port. <laughs> this film, Suicide Squad. It's very warm in here right now because I'm a fucking man. <laughs> John Campia. Uh, he is a kind of a commentator on YouTube, but he talks about movie news. He talks about movie television, the world of entertainment. Um, he's been getting some bad raps a lot recently, um, specifically because he used to do something like these live shows. You can see like like he sits at a desk. He has this fancy like high quality setup. Um, oh, and no. He sw he's been switching to podcast form, no video, and the reasoning why is because he put it behind a paywall, and a lot of viewers are upset with that, and we're going to talk about that in a second. John Campia has put a lot of this stuff behind a paywall, so now when you go mm -hmm. to watch his vi like, this is how it used to be when you watch his videos, got to see a quick ad real quick. Um, you see John Campia sitting at a desk, he has like a couple co-hosts, and you used to be able to watch this for free. OK, you can watch that the entire live show and then he uploads clips afterwards, blah, 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 blah. So you can now watch the clips of the live video where he's sitting behind a desk and he's doing all of this. You can watch a mm. clip of it for, of certain segments, but you can't watch the entire live show. The only thing you can watch in terms of the whole live show is a podcast form of it now. And this is what it is for oh. an hour because now it's behind a paywall. If you are now a member of the channel, you can now watch the live version with video. But you, can, mm. but if you want to watch the live version with video and you're not a member, you just got to watch the clips. A lot of fans of him are upset about this. That is not my main critique of this guy. Now, people might seem this might 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 look at this and be like, okay, this is boring. Why does this matter? There's an entire channel called Campia Exposed. And this entire channel, let's say at the least, definitely if you're going to react to these videos, you won't be monetized. John Campia has ah. said some foul shit so many times. And I think I'm going to show this video real quick. But just some of the things that John Campia has said and has done um, doesn't seem doesn't seem very good that he said and done some of these things so he reacts to the little mermaid recently so there's some hot takes there so if somebody asks how much are disney paying paying you about the same amount your mom charges hobos for blowjobs behind the walmart oh my god yeah holy shit he has said he has said this shit not only in replies but publicly when someone pays him god. like Okay, yeah, he sa he says a lot worse than this though. So let's keep watching. I think you're getting paid to say that because people think Disney or someone is paying John Campia. I think your dad paid your mom for sex and you were just an accident. See how easy it was just to say words. <laughs> now, this is supposed to be from a guy who talks about movies. He's supposed to be like kind of like an Ian Rappaport of the movie industry. Like he's an insider. He's an insider to the industry. He can talk about movies and actors. He's talked about the Alec Baldwin situation and had a very hot take on that he, he's talked about so many and this entire channel just shows all of this shit now i don't agree with everything this channel does this channel does make fun of his weight does make fun of his other things that are just downright harassment and bullying but it does do a this channel does do a good job on showing you things that you wouldn't normally see if you just went over to his channel so having mm. said that this insult from john campia who's pretty old he 40s 50s at least he also likes to emphasize out there ignore the trolls ignore the haters but he does stuff like this you know what i mean so it's a bit controversial yeah. with this i don't know what people like his comebacks are on point at least <laughs> somebody said in the live chat i was gonna ask what do you think of him having comebacks like this didn't you another says how much you got paid for this review about the same your mom charges for bl blowjobs around the walmart again he used he's used this exact same insult multiple times uh yeah love the race swap the race is mermaid she's a mermaid in this movie so him just clarifying stuff and then this is where he's actually talking a little bit more Hallie Bailey is a freaking nigga like 
100% absolute hood nigga. One of my knocks against the movie is probably oh. the fact that yeah, th that 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 little chime in voiceover. That's actually him saying that in a review. So oh. he's been on record to say the the n word and um has he has spoke upon this saying that I leave that video up on my channel as a reminder and a lesson to never say stuff like that again. But he, since he's left it up, people have now used that against him so many times. Don't worry, he says worse stuff here. He gets fooled easily. Like, do you know those play on words that sound like the N-word? Like, you can say two words and it sounds like somebody said the N-word. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He falls for that shit all the time, and you're going to see right now how bad it is. And it didn't need hood niggas. All right, uh, Smelly Negro. I love that name. I love <laughs> that name. <laughs> Yep. Oh no. Smelly, your oh, knee, oh, and the God. word grow. Yeah. Does not look good. All right. Oh. Uh, smelly knee grow. I love that name. Right. Uh, smelly knee grow. I love that name. I love that. Wait, wait, wait. The message of the super chat is even worse. Hockey movie chant. I swallow niggers come. No idea. <laughs> And he acts like he doesn't know what it is. So maybe he doesn't know what actually that stuff is. But like, to get fooled that easily, I uh... yeah, that's. I mean, maybe you're. Maybe we're. Oh my god. I mean, I don't want to like just say oh, he's old. You know, he can get fooled by these things. He might be like 51 years old, and you might not have read that or noticed. You know, all that sort of stuff. But then there's the there's the argument that okay, might, he might have actually just read that with the intent of saying it like that you know yep. just because why not funny ha 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 i tricked everyone to thinking i got tricked thank you guys so much for making the transitioning from taking the john campy show from being a video show to a podcast audio show so successful we weren't 100 percent sure very um very many people would move over and subscribe to the podcast feed but holy shit we've never been on the spotify charts before and now thanks to you we're actually in the top 10 on the spotify charts so he's in the top 10 audio podcast spotify charts and he's just that's a, a long shot that is a very long shot but what he meant is he's in the top 10 movie audio only podcast is what he meant but he doesn't specifically say this here mm -hmm. but just the fact that many of you have supported us to get us into the top 10 is just so amazing now if you skip forward uh here's the pot uh, the top 10, the John, the Joe Rogan show obviously is going to be way, way up there. Um, all these other ones are up there. Extractable, crime junkie, color. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so sense. now if you go under top podcast and you go under, what is it? Uh, own category entirely. John trying to make it seem like his podcast. TV and film. That's TV it. And film, there you so go. he's not yeah, in the top four, sense. not in the top five, not in the top six, but he's the seventh. And the people that are above him, they're like, actual companies or other youtubers who do it way better than what people think he does it you know so mm -hmm. like oh the fact that he said that, that he's in the top 10 spotify charts but it's only for tv and film is a little weird and it seems like since his transition i don't think that many people actually listen to him i just don't think there's that many podcasts that talk about tv and film you know what i mean like i feel like i could get the top 10 if i try for a couple for TV months and, yeah probably yeah so, like, that's interesting. Again, it's not, like, the end of the world sort of thing. It ain't like he's lying about anything major. There is some people who have problems with his uh, criticisms on some stuff as well, which I'm going to bring up here. But what he's doing is something that's not a fair trade, you know? It's kind of like you're paying to see something that's not really worth it. Which and, is exactly what it is. And, and it's been free his entire life. He started um, uh, old, he, before it was called the John Campia Show, it was called the Movie Blog. And then he moved to a company, AMC Movie Talk, where he was part of AMC Movie Talk. Then it turned into Collider Movie Talk. And then he went back on his own instead of working for a company and doing it. Now he's on his own doing it, which is great. And he can do whatever the hell he wants with it because he's on his own and blah, 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 whatever. But the fact that like he's been doing 10 plus years of like live video shows almost every single weekday for 10 years straight. And now he all of a sudden wants to switch to audio to get more memberships on his channel. It is a little funky, especially people who've been following for so long. If I was a massive fan and I've donated him money and all this other stuff and I always be part of the community, I think I should have a say-so because I've been part of the community for so long. And he tried to do that where 
he wanted to hear feedback. But since the feedback was so negative, he just kept it the way it was and moved on. And uh -huh. he, he does address this. I, I, I don't know the specific video, but he does address this. This is another video, though, to show. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Let me switch it real quick. So this is another video where he says, John Campia calls anyone who uses the word woke a moron. So if you think things are a little bit woke, which is just an easier term to use that, like, modern democratic views are being pushed upon, like, children or, like... Like, for example, like you said, the whole Ariel being black, like if that's being pushed upon children, LGBTQ, all these things that shouldn't be pushed upon children are. Apparently, if you use the word woke in that sentence, you're a moron. And this is his take on that. This is the thing. People who see representation of themselves everywhere they look completely take representation for granted. Representation matters. And you can be a fucking moron and go woke all you want. You want you want to know a test of the, look at somebody who uses the word woke. That to me is an automatic moron. But but the reality is when you're somebody like me, white straight male, like I I don't representation doesn't even register with me because everywhere I look is representation of me. Anyway, so what do you think of that? Mm. So he does make a point, right? Representation doesn't matter and all that sort of stuff. Like if you want to represent your ideas or beliefs right. in public or in a movie or TV show, then you're free to do that. That's completely fine. Right. But then he goes on to say that people who use the word woke are morons. And like it's it's kind of interesting because that means that anyone else who kind of uses that same terminology but in a different sense – could also be under that same criteria, which isn't very like fair, you know, like if you're going to look up the definition, definition of woke, you know, I'll do it real quick for those who are too lazy to do it. Here's a good definition from the Merriam-Webster dictionary, which is aware of and actively attentive to important societal facts and issues, especially issues of race and social justice, right? To be aware of these kinds of things, you know, like, are attentive to important societal facts and issues, I think that's completely fine. But to be called a moron for it is well out of pocket. <laughs> well, this is one of the times where he was bragging that something wouldn't make a much a bunch of money, but it did. And then he never he never goes back to correct himself. Aquaman is not going to be a billion dollar film. A billion is fairy tale land. It's not going to do that. <laughs> Look, I've been saying since April that I think uh, Aquaman should move out of that date. And then I, whenever I say that, I never really get these people going, no, other movies should move. Aquaman shouldn't have to move. It's not about having to move. It's about doing what's good for your movie. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if Aquaman had moved to October, if Aquaman had moved to November, I think we're looking at a 60 to $85 million potential opening, maybe even north of that. Aquaman's about to get his ass kicked by a little lady in a blue hat. <laughs> so Aquaman made a billion and uh, Mary Poppins made 287 million worldwide. Yeah. And yeah, I've screwed from the that hilltops for months him. that Aquaman should have moved. Oh boy. And it's too late to change. Especially and because he was the one who started saying the opposite. And these are the three movies that came out right around the same time saying Aquaman's going to be beat at the box office and blah, 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 blah. Well, it turns out Aquaman was the biggest fucking juggernaut of the time. And I think it came out around December of... It came out December 21st, 26th, I think, from the one of the screenshots. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. It came out in December, but like he kept saying, oh, Aquaman should move, Aquaman should move, Aquaman should move its release date, mm -hmm. so it makes more money, and it still made over a billion dollars where it stood. Release dates now, so yeah. Mary Poppins is about to spoil the party for all these guys. Take yeah, on. I mean, Who wins he's... the box? Just no, gone Venom playing it out, right? I think Venom's gonna you know, money gone much. against his ideas or the way he judges films and how they're meant to be. I mean, seriously, it's right. exactly the opposite of what he's done and what he said people shouldn't be doing. Right. It just doesn't make any sense. It makes you look not only a hypocrite, it just makes you look like you have no idea what you're talking about. Right. Which looks even worse for a person who's got 10 years plus worth of experience 
watching movies and giving takes on them, who, and, which couldn't be good or bad. And you know, it, it for, the last, for the last bad. 10 years, he's been looking at these box office numbers come out. He's been look So he has all the knowledge of for the last 10 years, looking at all these box office numbers of like movies coming out. He saw like when the original Iron Man movie came out, he watched the box office numbers the following weekend. Like he's been doing this every fucking week for 10 years. And he got Aquaman so dead wrong. So dead wrong. He thought Venom was going to make more money. Venom didn't make more money. His next thing. But I think Venom's going to make more money now. John, do you think Aquaman has a chance of crossing a billion? No. A billion is fairy tale land. There is a lot of people who are upset with John Campio because of a lot of these reasons. I was going to upload a full commentary video just talking about this and laying out all the issues I personally had because I did watch his content for the longest time. But it's definitely stopped and slowed down simply because of all the reasons I've, I've displayed in front of you and all that shit just lingers in your head when you watch him now because you, you don't know what he's saying is true and you're supposed to watch him being like, okay, John Campia is our closest, like all of us people who aren't around celebrities and aren't in, like talking to celebrities and aren't, don't got the insider scoop, we watch John Campia because he has the insider scoop. He's talked to celebrities. He's been doing this forever. We can trust to watch him and hear his word on things. But then the, the thing starts to, it starts to dissipate and go away as time goes on. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, it's just the sole idea, you know, of um, making these claims, making these mistakes constantly over the span of what last couple of years he was doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're doing that, not only does your credibility go down, it's also just your overall view count, which has been his problem, which I think was his main driver for making the, the whole members thing happen because i think he just wanted more money from uh from people to watch his content or just to make sure that he gets more views for some reason which i don't think views actually count if you're a member and watching videos from like our membership restricted videos those don't count towards ad rev i think because they don't have any ads so what he's aiming for is not really the greatest and along with that it's just you know, being someone who's that experienced, you need to be able to control what exactly it is you want to say. And it doesn't seem like he has any control over what he wants to say. He just blurts it out without thinking sometimes. 